Good morning and welcome to our service today as we celebrate Palm Sunday. Today as we study God's word together, we focus on the fact that Jesus came into Jerusalem as our Palm Sunday King. Though he came as a king, he came humbly in order to be our Savior. This Palm Sunday marks the beginning of the most important year of all of human history where Jesus carried out God's plan of salvation. May God bless us as we worship our Palm Sunday King. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love endures forever. The Lord is near those who come near to him. O oh, come, let us worship the Lord. We now join in singing our hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
as he was acclaimed by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path, so may we always hail him as our king and follow him with perfect confidence, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament book of Zechariah, chapter 9, beginning with the ninth verse. In this lesson, the prophet Zechariah shows us what kind of entry the Savior would have to Jerusalem. He foretells him coming on the colt, the foal of a donkey, not in some pageantry and majesty, but humbly, in order to be our Savior. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bowl will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Here ends the word of the Lord. Our gospel for today is recorded for us in Matthew chapter 21, beginning with the first verse. In this lesson, we see Jesus make his entry into Jerusalem, riding humbly on a donkey, yet coming in as a conquering king to the shouts of the people. People rightly identifying him as the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the one who came to be the Savior. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the heights! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Here ends the Gospel of our Lord. We now join in confessing our Christian faith with Martin Luther's explanation of the second article of the Apostles' Creed. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. All this he did that I should be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness just as he has risen from death and lives and rules eternally. This is most certainly true. We now join in singing our hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor.
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God for our consideration today comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning with the fifth verse. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, mindset makes a difference. If you think about what people are going through all across this land, people are sheltered in place and are stuck in their homes. Sometimes the only interaction they have is with the people of their immediate family. A well, mindset makes a difference. If you are stuck at home and you say to yourself, I'm stuck here and these are the only people I have to have social interaction with, well, your time in isolation is going to tick by very slowly. On the other hand, if you look at your situation and say, these are the only people I am going to have any kind of interaction with, great. I can't wait for the family time. That family time is going to pass by sooner than you might think. You see, it has to do with your mindset. Mindset makes a big difference in our relationships with one another and really as we go through life in general. Well, ask yourself, what is your mindset in life? Are you cautious or cavalier? Are you pessimistic or optimistic? Well, this morning in our lesson from Philippians, Paul is going to address that concept of our mindset. Listen again to what he says. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. When you think about a guy like the Apostle Paul, his mindset had completely changed dramatically and drastically because of what Christ had done for him. Well, today we begin Palm Sunday, that high and holy week of the church year. We join with Jesus as he makes his way into Jerusalem to the praise and the shouts of the people, and eventually at the end of the week, he would lay down his life and suffer and die. And as we focus on Jesus during this last week of his life on earth as he carried out his ministry, we want to focus in on his word and his works and really on his mindset. And as we do, we see how that impacts us and our salvation. And so this morning, we want to follow Christ from cross to crown. Paul's going to talk to us about the mindset of Jesus and how it was displayed in his actions. He writes, He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Jesus is true God. That's a fact that the Bible teaches over and over again. And yet that is a truth that many people find so hard to comprehend. They look at Jesus and say, well, he was born in Bethlehem, he was raised in Nazareth, and he died on a cross outside of Jerusalem. And that's it. But Jesus is true God. 
The Bible teaches that over and over, and he always has been, and he always will be God. Nothing's going to change that. And that's what makes what Paul writes here so remarkable. Because even though Jesus is true God, what do we see him doing but humbling himself? Making himself subject to every temptation that you and I face? Make himself subject to the, the frustrations of this world? And even humbling himself to the point of death. Is there anything in this world that we could compare that to? Think about for a moment somebody like Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon. What are the chances, do you think, that Jeff Bezos would exchange his luxurious boardroom and mansions for the sweat of one of the Amazon fulfillment centers, becoming an hourly worker, and start packaging up shipments to go out to online shoppers? Now, that might make for a good reality TV show, but our human reason, our human common sense says, that's crazy. Nobody would do that. What mega-billionaire would ever exchange his luxurious lifestyle for the lowest common worker? And yet, Jesus did that and more for us. Jesus, though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor. He came to this world and took on human flesh with all of its frailties for you and me. We call this his humiliation. He humbled himself. He took on a lifestyle that I don't know that many would envy. It was painful. It was lowly. It was difficult. Jesus walked in humility as he came to this world to be our Savior. Now, to humble yourself doesn't mean to demean oneself. Rather, it means to forget oneself, to think about others. You think about how Jesus did that for you and me. He humbled himself, thinking not of himself. Thinking not, how could he use his deity to his advantage while he was in this world? No, he forgot about himself and he focused on us. That's how he walked in humility in this world for us. That's the kind of mindset Jesus had. And as we look at Paul's lesson this morning, Paul says that's the kind of mindset that he wants all Christians to have. Have the same mindset as that of Christ Jesus by being humble. Is that easy to do? How easy it is for us to be so self-focused to be looking out for our sinful pride and look past other people. How easy it, is us, easy it is for us to turn our nose up at others and look down on them. How easy it is for us to be concerned about ourselves and our own insecurities so that we put other people down. You see, we are so used to focusing on us that we forget what it is to be humble. It doesn't come naturally for us. By nature, you and I were born into this world screaming as selfish children. And that selfishness sticks with us. But Jesus tells us, I want you to to be humble. I want you to have that humility. And the only way for that to happen is for Jesus to work directly in our hearts. The only way for that to happen is for him to go to work and give us that humility that we need. You see, Jesus took all of our insecurities, all of our selfish behavior, all of our immoral mindsets that we had lived by previously on himself. And he offers us forgiveness. He gives us that forgiveness full and free so that those things don't stand against us. He's given us a clean slate, wiped it clean, and given us his forgiveness. 
We pray in the Psalms, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Well, God did that through Jesus. He's given us that new and clean heart so that now we look at that call for humility, to walk with him in his humility, as something that's a joy for us to do. No, it's not always easy for us to do as Christians. Because the world will batter us around and will try to take advantage of us as we walk in that humility. But we do that out of response for what Jesus did when he humbly walked this earth for us and went to the cross for our salvation. That's what it means to follow Jesus from cross to crown. Can you imagine what that looks like? When we start putting that into practice? When we walk in his humility, in his love, in his service towards one another? How is that going to impact our congregation? How is that going to impact our households? How is that going to impact our neighbors and those in our workplace? Well, you see, when we do that, we start giving them just a tiny taste of what heaven is like as we walk in this humility that he has shown for us. Today, as we gather around God's word for this Palm Sunday, I want you to think back to Jesus going into Jerusalem. He rode in humbly on that donkey to amid the shouts of praise from not only the children, but also the crowds that were there. They sang, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, come and save us. But then at the end of the week, Jesus humbly went to the cross to suffer and die. I don't know about you, but for me, I think the temptation would be to take up that full use of my divine power and say, forget about humanity. But Jesus didn't do that. He went to the cross to fulfill the mission that God had laid out for him. Paul tells us, Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Those verses begin with the word, therefore. Because Jesus fulfilled everything that God had laid out for him, for the plan of salvation, God exalted him. God raised him up so that he was now making full use of all of his divine power and glory. Even though Jesus is true man, that humanity now took on all the properties and characteristics of his divine nature, in one person. Now, all this glory was his. What does that mean for us? As we stand here at this week focusing on Jesus' passion, on the pain that he would suffer, why does he want us to know this? Why does he want us to know that he would be exalted again? Because Jesus wants to share the glory that is his with you and me. Even though he had to go through this humiliation, even though he had to suffer everything for the world's behalf, even though he had to pay every single last sin, even for those people who don't believe or trust in him, Jesus did it to the glory of God, and so that he could make full use of his divine power and glory again. And he lets us in on a little secret. He says, this glory that I have, I want to share with you. The Apostle John tells us, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 
All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This hope that we have affects our mindset. It affects the way we look at life now. Think about Paul for a moment. When Paul wrote this letter to the Philippians, he was sitting in prison. He was awaiting a death sentence. And yet you read his letter to the Philippians and you see joy pouring out of his heart. No, Paul wasn't looking forward to the executioner's sword. But he knew, Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my Savior and you have something better in mind for me than this world. You have glory awaiting me. Glory that I will share with you in eternity. If you had an investment, and it was losing money, but you have that guarantee that in time you will quadruple your money, what do you suppose your mindset would be towards that investment? No, it wouldn't be pleasant as you watch your dollar amount go down. But you knew what the end would bring. You would endure the difficult days because you knew the glory days were coming. Well, the life for you and me as Christians, sometimes it's not easy, is it? Because the world we live in attacks us every single day. It plays on our emotions. It tries to whittle into our hearts and keep us with guilt. It tries to take our focus off of Jesus, our Savior. It challenges us and says, Jesus, who humbly came to this world, he couldn't possibly be a Savior. A Savior doesn't die on a cross. But we endure those difficult days because we know the end result. As we stand here at the beginning of Holy Week and we look at all of the terror and torture that's going to come our Savior's way by the end of the week, it is difficult for us as Christians. And yet, as difficult as it is to see that Savior hanging on the cross because of my sin and because of your sin, we know the end. We know coming on Easter Sunday, Jesus will reign victoriously. We know Jesus will display his glory as he rises from the grave. And he says to us, I want to share that glory with you. As we live in this world, it is difficult to be a Christian. Some days are harder than others. Some days we wonder if we're even going to survive. Because the world savagely attacks us for our faith. And yet, the temptation is to look out for ourselves and not walk humbly in this world. But when we reflect on what Jesus has done for us, how he walked in humility in order to win our salvation, it makes it a little easier. Because we know the end result, we know as we follow him from the cross, we end up at the crown, where we see him victorious. And he makes us that promise, be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. That completely changes our mindset, so that we can humbly walk in this world, knowing that we too will share in his glory. Amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our gracious and glorious King, on that first Palm Sunday, you came in triumph to Jerusalem with people shouting their hosannas. You came as the Prince of Peace, to lay down your life on Calvary for the sins of the world. Through the sacrifice you made, God and sinners are reconciled. Savior and King, accept our humble thanks for giving the kingdom of heaven to us sinners. O Lamb of God, who came to suffer and die, come now as King into our hearts to reign. With your love, 
change our lives so that we no longer serve sin, but only righteousness. Give us faith to trust you, courage to confess you, strength to bear our crosses, and zeal to follow you all the days of our lives. May we feel compelled to witness your saving name at every opportunity and to join with others in sending missionaries to the far corners of the earth to preach the good news to every creature. May we who serve you here in faith ever behold you in your glory in eternity. Hear us, blessed Jesus, our Redeemer and King. Amen. And we join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close our service this morning with the singing of our last hymn, When Morning Gilds the Skies. this morning. There will be details following this announcement showing how you can continue to give your offering to the Lord. Also, later this week, we will have our Good Friday service that will be posted online by 7 p.m. on this Friday. I also encourage you to join us once again next week as we celebrate Easter Sunday. I know this might not be the way you intended or hoped to celebrate Easter this year, but I invite you to join us back here because even though we are separated by miles and video cameras and so forth, nothing can take away the fact that we will celebrate our crucified and risen Lord. God bless you on your week.